Hello, everyone, and welcome to the... <coughs> Excuse me, I had a frog in my throat there. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Today, we're going to be doing a solo playthrough of Massive Darkness with four awesome heroes. We've got Ostara, Bajorn, Ajax, and Sybil. These four brave heroes have decided to go on Quest 8 to defeat the three roaming elemental monsters. If you'd like to see how to set up the game, feel free to check out the video before this on the playlist. Otherwise, hang out here and we're going to start our playthrough. But before doing that, a couple things. One, make sure I'm going to put links down below. Make sure to check out Two Can Play That Game and Rolling Solo. Both of them have really good playthroughs already out for uh, Massive Darkness doing the tutorial scenario. So those ones will probably be a little shorter than mine. Um, sorry, I'm doing Quest 8, but I just I really want to show you guys Quest 8 because... I think it's fun. <laughs> um, and then also Doug Herring will have one. He doesn't have one yet, but he will. And once he does, I'll put that link as well. But make sure to check out those three YouTube channels. They are awesome people. <laughs> so I really suggest checking them out. The second thing I just wanted to say is anybody that was affected by Harvey or Irma, I am hoping that you are all safe and that either you are able to get out of town or you were able to stay in your house and your house is okay. I know... Uh, Tom Vassell from the Dice Tower, he just put up a video talking about how they're packing up and leaving, and it made me a little emotional. I'm not going to not gonna lie. You know, I just, I can't even imagine that here in Minnesota. We don't have hurricanes. So I just, my heart goes out to them. I'm thinking about them, and I hope you guys are thinking about them too. But in the meantime, they wouldn't want us to not have some fun with this game. So let's go and have some fun. The first thing that you want to do before you start your playthrough is determine who is going to be your starting Lightbringer, and we're going to use Ostara right here. If you've played Zombicide Black Plague, I've done a playthrough of that one. Um, it's very similar in that one where you have a player order, and then the next, uh, after each each character goes, then you're going to move the first player marker to the next hero, etc., etc. Now, I can't for the life of me find my first player token, so I'm just going to use this treasure token to be my first player token. So I'm going to put that here with Ostara. Before we jump headlong into this playthrough, I just wanted to show you guys the game round summary that they have on the back of the rulebook. Quite helpful. There's a couple things in here that I think are crazy that they didn't mention um, that I'll make sure to point out. But well, essentially what's going to happen is first uh, we're going to have a player's phase and we're going to do this for each player. So you're going to go through their player's phase. They've got three actions. They can do all these different types of actions. You have movements where you can spend two movements either doing a move or an open door or picking up tokens. You can do a combat action. You can do a reorganize or a trade. You can do a get up if you've been stunned. Um, transmute though, it, oh, there's a do nothing. You can do nothing. Transmute though is actually a free action, yet they have it under here and they don't mention that. That's something that I think is silly. They shouldn't really mention that. And what transmuting means is you can take three equipment because what's going to happen is you're going to get tons of equipment in this game. And so a lot of it, you're not even going to be able to use. You'll just put it in your backpack. And if you have three equipment, you can give up those three equipment as a free action to get one equipment that is one level higher than the lowest level card um, that you gave up. So for example, let's say I gave up three, I have to give up three items. One was a level two and two were level ones. So then I would be able to discard those three and get one level two item. So it just helps you to get better weapons earlier. If you're playing the story mode, you would not be able to use any level two weapons until you got into that specific room that would be spawning level two monsters. But we're not playing that way. We're playing the regular mode, the non-story mode, and so you can use any weapons that you find. So we are just going to have some fun. <laughs> the last action that you can do is called the signature action. Once again, this does not take an action to do this, but you can spend one experience point to execute whatever your uh, signature ability is. So those are the things that you're going to be, do be doing during your player's phase. Three actions and an unlimited amount of the free actions, so the transmute and the signature. And then if you've attacked any enemies and they haven't been killed, they will counterattack and they will counterattack only you at the end of your specific turn. Then you're going to do that for each hero. And then after doing that, then we have the enemy phase. After the enemy phase, enemies will activate, they'll attack, blah, blah, blah. Then we go to experience phase where we can spend our experience points to level up. And then we have our event phase. And then end phase where we just simply clean up and then we rinse and repeat this. 
Here we have Ostara. She is right here. Her first action that we're going to do is a movement action. A movement action allows us to do two different things. We can move twice, we can move once, open a door, move once, uh, pick up items, anything like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use one movement point to move into this room, and then a second movement point, we're going to open this door. Now once we open this door, we're gonna have to draw a door card. We'll grab a door card from this stack, and we drew ambush! <laughs> what a great way to start, right? So here we see three the three different rooms that potentially could have items in it. Now what we do is we look at each zone individually and we add treasures and any spawned enemies. So in this first zone, it says spawn a guard card in the active heroes zone. So this actually is going to go outside of the zones in the, the room that we see. We're actually going to spawn in the current room that Ostara is in. Okay, but then do you see how there's this black treasure here instead of down here that's white? This black treasure means that when you pick up that treasure token, you actually get one level higher than the current room. So the room right now is at level one, but whoever picks up that tr treasure token is actually going to get a level two treasure. Kind of cool. Okay, then we look at this, this uh, second zone, no enemy here, and we're going to put three treasures. And then this third room here we can completely ignore because the, the room that we went into or opened the door only has two zones. So let's first spawn our guard card. The tile that we're at is at a level one. So we'll draw a level one guard card. And we've drawn dwarf defenders. Oh boy, starting off difficult. <laughs> so what we see here on the card, first of all, level one, good. Second, we see it says mob. Mob means that there's going to be a group of these enemies. Well, how many do you ask? Good question. <laughs> you see this times one here with all these little people? That means that you have uh, minions equal to the amount of players that are playing. So we're playing with four characters, so four basic minions and one boss. Each one will only have one health. Down here it shows you they do have a special ability. Reroll blank results one additional time for defense which is really great because if you look down here, they get to roll two blue dice for defense. So very likely they're going to be defending at least one or two each round, which is going to make them difficult to defeat during the, uh, during the game. Oh, that's wonderful, especially at the beginning. For their attack, they'll roll one yellow die, and they only can attack with melee weapons. Now, we're not done yet. Because there is a boss here, we have to draw a treasure card from this level one deck. So I have this level one deck right here. And then we have to equip that. And the boss can use that equipment if, if, if it works for what their abilities are. And it's not. We have the Twisted Chest Acid Cloud. Okay, so remove this card if the hero just picked up a treasure token. Otherwise, discard it and draw the next. I actually think since this is a trap, and so it says you only resolve this if the hero picked it up, the hero didn't pick it up. So we're just going to discard this and draw another one. Let's see what we get. Ooh, we have ourselves the Gnomish Gold Sack. So this has an ability, but that's only going to be useful for the heroes, not for the dwarves. Thank goodness. At least it didn't give them more defense. So what we can do is slide that right underneath the dwarf's card, and then whoever defeats the final, or the boss essentially, whoever defeats the boss is going to be able to pick up that item immediately. Since our card told us that we need to place this in the active hero's location or zone, we'll place all five enemies in this room. Now as you can see, it gets really crowded really quickly in here, and I don't honestly know why they didn't make these a little bit bigger. If you'd be playing this with six people, I would have two more minions in there. How, wh wh where would anything else go? <laughs> I don't know. This is the boss one, and I can't defeat that guy until I get rid of all the minions. And I want you guys to think of these minions simply as health points for the boss. Because when we're going to roll dice for the boss, we're only going to roll one yellow die when we do attacking, or two blue dice for defense. We're not going to do that per enemy in here. And if we do multiple damage, we can do multiple damage to multiple minions. So really, it's basically like additional health for the boss. Just gives them more of a, of, a, of a feel of, you know, being bigger by having more of them on the board, I guess. We'll also place a level 2 treasure here. Now, I'm using these cool little treasure tokens, and this one looks slightly different than the other ones, and that's to help me remember that this is a level 2 treasure. 
versus the other ones. We'll put three in this room because that's what we're supposed to do here, and that is all level one treasure. We have finished our spawning. Now we can decide what we want to do for action two. We have two more actions. I think even though it's not likely we're actually going to hit these dwarves, we're going to try it. We're going to attack these dwarves for action two. When deciding to go to battle, you have to first look to see, okay, do I want to use any of my abilities? So technically right now, we're in a shadowed area. The, the area is dark. There's no light. So we could use our shadow mode skill, but our shadow mode skill is all about defense. We also could use our special skill, tough defense, but once again, it's defense. So we can't use any of that. I kind of made her our, our you know, tank, so to speak. So then we look at our weapon. Our weapon here has a yellow one by the, uh, by the sword. So that means we can do melee damage. So we have to be in the same location as our enemy. And we get to roll one yellow die. You'll also want to look at your class and look to see if your basic ability you can use. So this is my free class ability. But once again, it's about defense. Can't do anything here. Then you have your signature ability that you could potentially use if you have XP to spend. You can use it once per activation. And once again, can't use it. It's not even useful anyways. It's all about protecting other people. So we're just going to uh, start rolling dice. In Massive Darkness, you'll always roll all of the attack and defense dice together at the same time. So this will be our attack die. And then the dwarfs are going to roll two blue defense dice, hoping that they'll both be blanks and then we'll reroll them and be blanks again. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, well, that's wonderful. So we did one point of damage, but the dwarves block for two. They also get what's called a BAM here, but that BAM doesn't do anything for them. They don't have any BAM abilities. They'd get to re-roll this one, but they don't really need to because uh, nothing's going to happen. So that was action two. We're going to try one more time for action three. I highly doubt we're going to hit one, but you never know. Yeah, we got th three shields to one. Didn't even touch them. Ostara has just completed her player phase turn and now we move to the counter attack because she attacked those uh, dwarfs they are going to fight back looking at the dwarf defenders they get to roll one yellow die for attack ostara here is going to be rolling one blue die for defense here but also her long sword provides her with another blue die and because of where she is, she has this defense ability, first of all, that any blanks rolled on her defense roll will give her plus one shield. So she's guaranteed shields just because of that. And then here, because she's in shadows, if she rolls a bam, she can inflict one wound to the attackers. That's the whole reason why I attacked them, even though I knew I wasn't going to hit them. Because if I get to roll a bam, then I would actually wound one. And remember, wounds go through defense. So I'd automatically destroy one of those minions. Here we are. We got the one yellow for the uh, dwarfs and our two defense. Come on, bam. Come on, bam. Yes. Okay. First of all, that is one defense for us anyways, because any blanks are considered one defense for Ostara. We've got two more defense here, but we have a bam. So we get to inflict one wound to the, uh, to the dwarves. One wound will destroy one minion. Uh. Since Ostara took out that minion, she also gains one XP. Now let's move on to Bajorn. Bajorn as the Bone Crusher is absolutely amazing, okay? Because he has this first blood ability and he's always going to want to be charging in to where the enemies are and they're automatically going to take a wound. So we're going to use this first blood and use our first action to take a move action and move into the room with the other dwarves and in turn automatically wound and destroy one of those minions. Here's Bajorn with his mighty axe and he'll take one step into this room automatically defeating this minion. This also means Bajorn will gain one XP. Now his second action is he's going to do a combat action. His axe, he gets to roll one red die, which is really nice. The red dice are the stronger fight dice. And I'll show you why. Look at this die. This die can have three attack, three hits. Oh, awesome. Okay, but he's also in a shadow area. So he has this shadow skill that if he gets a bam, he gets plus one wound, plus one wound, which is great. That'll go through the two defense that the um, dwarf defenders have. So we'll be rolling these three dice. 
Come on, looking for lots of attack. Okay, so this is cool. We have two shields, so they don't have to re-roll, or they don't get to re-roll. We have two swords, so we tied. But we have a BAM. Remember what that BAM does? One wound. So we just took out another minion. This minion is history. That also provides us with another XP. So we're now at level, uh, level two for XP. I think we're gonna do our third activation and do the same thing, roll the red die with the two blue defense. Let's see what we get. Oh, okay, they get to re-roll once a blank result. So let's re-roll this one and they get two. Okay, two uh, shields, but then we have three swords. That will do one more point of damage and take out another minion. That last minion is no more. For any other normal character, your turn will be done. But Bajorn isn't a normal character. He has the headbutt. Once per activation, roll one yellow die, so that's this one, and deal wounds equal to the amount of swords and bams um, to one enemy in the same room. So it has to be only to one enemy, but we could actually take out the boss right here and not have to worry about a counterattack as long as we roll one sword. Let's see if we can do it. Of course, I almost forgot to gain my XP. God, that would have been terrible. So let me put that there. So we've got three XP now for Bajorn. Just need a sword or a bam. Sword. That means this boss dwarf defender. <laughs> see ya. Whenever you take out that mob in total, you get to discard this card. You get to keep the specific item that we have. And so the item that Bajorn got is the Gnomish Gold Sack. This card counts as two equipment cards when used as part of a transmute action. <gasps> oh, cool. After drawing this card, the hero immediately gains three experience points. Hmm, we didn't draw it. We gained it. Yeah, we're going to play on hard and not gain that additional 3 XP because I think that's kind of ridiculous. That's just way, way overpowered. <laughs> so we'll just take it as it counts as two equipment in our backpack. And when we want to do a transmute action, we only have to do one other item instead of two other items. Also, since we took out a boss, we gain 3 XP. 4, 5, 6. But because this is a co-op game... All enemies except for minions, when they're destroyed, everyone gains that amount of XP. So I'm going to increase everybody's XP by three, which means Ostar is going to have four. Everyone else will just have three XP. There are some advantages and disadvantages of this. Overall, I actually like this mechanic. This means that nobody is going to get left behind on experience points purely from the simple stat fact that they didn't get the right items right away. And so then they're trying to play catch up. So I like that everybody gets the experience, but you're going to find that then we get powerful quickly because we kill one enemy. I mean, we're just gaining 16 XP or 12 in this case. We just gain 12 XP by destroying one boss. That, that's a lot. That'll end Bajoran's turn. And now since there's no enemies on the board, no counterattacks, so we can move on to our battle wizard, Ajax. Our battle wizard has it pretty simple right now. First thing he's going to do is take two steps for his first action. His second action is he's going to pick up this level two item. And that's one. So this is considered a movement point. So he's going to do that for one movement. And then his second movement is he's going to move into this room. But don't forget, let's draw our level two item. We found the Javelin of Sure Strike. Ooh, it's a ranged weapon. Okay, so there is a difference between ranged weapons and magic weapons. Right now, the Battle Wizard has a staff, which is considered a magic weapon. You can't use both uh, like different types of weapons in the same attack, but if I had two ranged weapons, I could use both of those. Except for if you look here, this is a two-handed weapon, so you're going to only hold this, um, and you have to use both hands to hold it has a pretty cool ability here, attack, may reroll blank results one additional time. Nice. But you can see it's ranged based on where the numbers are. Well, that would be really great for Sybil, but not so much for our battle wizard, Ajax. So I think he's just going to put this in his backpack and give it to her soon. Ajax has set himself up really nice to be able to get tons of equipment. He's going to spend one of his two movement points to pick up all three of these level one treasures and then his second movement point to move into this room. But that means we get to draw one, two, three of these treasure cards. We found the Dagger of Sure Strike, the Chainmail Armor, and a Lesser Healing Potion. Ooh, okay. First time seeing an item instead of, um, uh, of something that you would have as a weapon or armor. You can put these in your backpack, and they are usable any time during your turn. So they're almost active in your backpack, which is kind of cool. 
This dagger is a melee weapon, and this is nice armor. I don't think Ajax is going to need armor, though. He can teleport. He can move around. Um, and I haven't shown you that, but that's because he doesn't need it. We'll, we'll show you all of his skills when he uses them. Um, but so I think what I'm going to do is I'll put all of this in my backpack for now, looking to be able to give this chain mail to maybe someone like Ostara or even Bajorn. That'll end Ajax's turn. There's no enemies on the board, so no countermeasures need, uh, counter strikes need to happen. So now we move to Sybil. So Sybil, for her first action, she is the ranger. She really wants to get that awesome javelin. So I think she's going to spend her first two, uh, her first movement action using the two movement points to move into this room. And then as the second action, do a trade action with Ajax. Right now, Sybil has this short bow. And not that helpful. So she's going to trade that short bow in for this javelin of sure fire, which um, Ajax has. And then actually, the other thing that she's going to do, just because of what she's going to plan on doing next turn, she's going to switch out her armor. She's going to give him the level one leather armor, and she'll grab this chainmail armor. Now, her plan isn't to keep that forever, but she has one more activation, or no, two, two, no, yeah, one more activation. One more activation that's going to get her into a different room that hopefully she can then give it to somebody else as one action. They don't have to go chase her around. Sybil's final action is going to be to move out into this room for one movement point and the other to open this door. This is a little bit risky. We're going to probably activate some enemy here, but eh, I still think it's worth it to keep the story moving. She'll draw from the door deck. This room only has two zones in it, so we have spawn a guard card and no enemy, and a total of five treasures, none that are a higher level. So we'll grab a level one guard card, flip it over. Oh, we have troglodyte, troglodyte brutes. They have a shadow mode. That's cool. Defense. Blank results get plus one. And they roll one yellow die and one blue defense. And they have two health. Oh, because they're brutes. And if you look here, we're going to have a total of four uh, minions and one boss. Don't forget, though, they also get one treasure card. So let's flip this top one. Oh, man, we're getting so lucky. Charm of Protection. Defense may reroll any one attack die one additional time. Oh, that's kind of cool. I don't think they actually get that benefit, though, because they can't use an item. I think they can only use things that actually match up with their abilities. If you disagree, let me know and put that in the comments, because I'm not sure about that, but I'm pretty sure they can't use an actual item like that. But that will be a really nice item for somebody. These troglodyte brutes are going to spawn in this room over here. There'll be a total of five of them. They look kind of cool. And then don't forget, we have to place the treasures two in the first one and three in the second, if I can get it in there. And of course, remember, their special ability is about being in shadow mode, and they're totally in a light room, so they wouldn't get that effect. Unfortunately, though, Sybil has used all of her actions, so that's the end of her turn. So now we'll move to the enemy phase. We see here in the enemy's phase, all enemies on the board activate, performing the following steps. Step one, try to attack the hero, a closest hero. If they're not able to, they move to step two, move one zone towards the target. Then step three, try to attract a hero. If they're still unable to do that, move another zone towards the target. So they essentially can move up to two zones. They're going to attack in their current zone and one zone, um, one zone forward. Those are the two that they're going to be able to attack in. So they'll try and attack in this zone. Nobody there. They're going to move out into this zone, and they're going to see three heroes just chilling, maybe having a campfire for the night, and laugh at them as they attack. <laughs> now, here's the thing. There's three heroes in there. How do they determine which one that they're going to attack? Because they will only attack one. Well, they look to see which one has the most unspent XP. And guess who that is? Bajorn. Bajorn's got six XP because he was the one who took out so many minions. And he is most definitely in that room, right? He, he's right here. So Bajorn is going to be the one defending. As you may recall, the troglodyte will roll one yellow die for, for his attack. And Bajorn just has his leather armor on, so that's going to be one blue die for defense. Let's see what these guys do. Ooh, two attack to one defense. Looks like they're going to do one damage to Bajorn. Oh man, our first wound <laughs> will go down to four health. Yeah, you don't have a lot of health here. We mustn't forget 
that Bajorn is a bone crusher. When the hero enters an enemy's zone, or an enemy enters the hero's zone, inflict one wound to the enemy. That means he'll do one wound to one of those minion, uh, those minion troglodyte brutes. I could try and put that with the minions on the board, but there's just not enough room. So I usually just put it on the card, and when, once we get a second one, we'll just remove one minion, so on and so forth. Now with the enemy's phase complete, we'll go to the experience phase. Spend experience points, experience points to get new skills. And the only one that can do that is Bajorn. So let's go ahead and do that. To start with, I don't think it's a hard decision for Bajorn. Remember, he's not really great at defense. So I think the best thing to do is to upgrade max health. We could get charge, which allows him to do a movement and an attack action in one action. And then here's a taunt where he can taunt the next attack to go to him instead of somebody else. Or we also have this mace and hammer, but he doesn't have any maces or hammers right now. He only has an axe. So it just makes sense. We'll do the plus one max health. That also means he gains one health now. So he's going to heal one as well. We'll heal Bajorn by one. And we'll decrease his experience points because that cost five to one XP. Last but not least, we have our event phase and our end phase. There's no tokens really. We'll have to move the first player token for the end phase. But let's first do the event phase. We're going to draw from this event deck. Let's see what we get. We have forward patrol. Spawn a guard card. Place the enemy in a zone with the token of the current level plus one. Just current level if level plus one is not present. Well, level plus one is level two for us. We can see that, but we are going to spawn another level one guard in this, that location. And we get goblin archers. Oh, boy. <laughs> so first of all, only one health. That's nice. There's going to be four minions, one boss. They do, if they attack ranged, they and they roll a bam, they get plus one sword. Ouch. And they get to roll two dice for a ranged attack, one die for a melee. So they can do either or. And so if they can do range, they'll do range first because of their ability. They also have one blue die for defense. Now let's see what their item is. So their item is going to be, oh, and a sword. So they've got a short sword. So they'll actually roll two dice for attack um, for both melee and for range. We'll place all those archers way up here in this location where the two is. And I have not talked to you guys about ranged weapons yet. How ranged weapons work is it's a one plus for range. So that just means it cannot be in their current location and it has infinite range as long as line of sight is there. So they can see us over here and they could shoot us next time. And they're kind of far away <laughs> if you look at this. So this will be interesting. We might try and hide from them maybe next round or maybe we'll just jump on in there and try and take them out. I don't know. We'll see. Don't forget though, these troglodyte brutes have two health. So they're going to be harder to get rid of as well. So this is going to be fun. Good way to start off. Last thing that we'll do is we'll move the incorrect first player token that I can't find mine. It's somewhere in this house. <laughs> but I'm going to move this over to Bajorn, and Bajorn will be first player. This will end round one.